When a patient comes here, they get the newest, the latest, the greatest, the cutting edge technology and the cutting edge outcomes. But they are really treated like an individual, like a person, like a family member, where you can lose some of that in some of the bigger institutions. We're able to provide minimally invasive surgery for big problems, but patients are able to go home in a day or sometimes two days. A lot of the cancers in urology are treatable and, and curable. And you see a lot of good outcomes, especially if you can get there early. I've met so many families, especially in dealing with prostate cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, where they come in, they don't even know what to ask you. Their, their whole world is turned upside down. And there you are with answers and a plan and, and educate them so that they can make informed decisions for themselves. And that bond that you make is, is lifelong. Our patient is a 57-year-old male with a history of intermediate grade prostate cancer and he has a plan to undergo a robotic radical prostatectomy. We're going to remove his prostate uh, which contains the cancer. Pretty complex procedure which involves removing the prostate and putting the bladder back together with the urethra so that the urinary tract is, is intact. What we need to do is first secure the patient to the bed and pad all the, the pressure points and then once he's secured, we actually turn him in what's called Trendelenburg position, which means that he's actually gonna be on his head with his feet in the air, kind of in this type of orientation. So you gotta make sure that he's really well padded and really well secured. The reason why we put him in that position is because we wanna work underneath the pubic bone and we need to get under there. And then what we do is we do what's called insufflation, which means fill up the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas to a certain pressure so that we form a dome and a working area so that not everything is, is compressed when we're working. All the lights go off in the room. All you see is all the monitors on and, and the instruments and light in the patient and it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Some of the challenges in that operation is, is preserving continence and trying to preserve erectile function. This is what makes this procedure very, very challenging. Typically, the robotic radical prostatectomy starts with uh, scrubbing into the surgery along with my assistant and inserting metal trocars, which is how we attach the robot. I'll then break scrub and go over to the robot, where I'm, which is called the surgeon's console, where I'll be starting the operation. What's so great about robotic surgery is that you're able to operate as if you have your hands inside the patient, except they're the size of a pen. The work that you're doing on the robot is actually done with these fingers right here. Everything you do can be done. Twisting your wrists, such as this, opening and closing a scissor, throwing a suture. Your feet do a lot of things too. They control the camera. If you push the camera clutch, you can bring the camera closer to you or further away. You can turn it just like a car on a steering wheel, change your angle. So these fingers are really important. And you can notice when you look at the, the surgery that there's really minimal bleeding. And what that translates to is better patient outcomes, less transfusions, less pain, quicker recovery. So I actually can get up from the console and go and call the family in the waiting room who's obviously very worried and anxious about their loved one, but I can call them and give them reassurance that everything is going well, give them some time estimates and tell them that, don't worry, everything's fine, go get some lunch. <laughs> Who's here? We have a whole bunch. My father-in-law and my stepson. All right, come on over here, guys. So we're all done, and uh, there were really no surprises in there with the exception of him having a umbilical hernia, which we actually fixed also. I didn't see anything outside the prostate to the naked eye, so everything looked the way it was supposed to look. Once the prostate is out, we, we reconnect the bladder to the urethra, and I thought that connection was perfect. So the catheter is gonna stay in, in this bladder for about a week, and that's just so things heal and there's no pressure on anything. Okay, he lost very little blood. He certainly won't need a transfusion or anything like that. Uh, he'll have some pain. Actually, the fact that we had to fix that hernia actually will give him a little more pain, but not terrible. I still expect him to go home tomorrow. I keep him at least till lunchtime. But he's done, he's on to recovery. Everything went well, No, nothing surprising. Good, now you can take a deep breath and you're on to recovery, right? Go we'll celebrate. Thank you. Like patients, you know, when they come back to see us in the office, they tell us about how great an experience they had. And that started with when they got to the hospital, to they went to the operating room, to they went to the recovery room, and finally to the floor that they were on and went home. So we're seeing uh, really positive uh, reinforcement and positive feedback as to how we're doing with the patients. I think the best compliment I or anybody could get here at the hospital is to pass a patient or to be with a patient and for them to say, I'm so glad I came here for my care. The Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother 
created St. Clair's in order to be a Catholic spiritual hospital. The difference that that makes, I think, from some of the larger academic medical centers or tertiary medical centers is here, everything that happens to a patient is surrounded by that spirituality. You can see it in how employees speak to one another. You can see it in how physicians relate with our employees, how patients relate to our employees. We know what's important to people. What is St. Clair's? It's the miracle of birth. It's about putting patients first. It's seeing someone walk without pain. It's finding new ways to heal. It's being on the front line. It's more than a job, it's a calling. It's where I know I can make a difference. It's a place to do what I love. It's the future.